uh, in the next five to ten years I don't plan to have uh, kids or be married. Hello everyone, this is Monda Kenoti. I am an adventurer, a mountaineer, an entrepreneur and today I am at, at Census Africa by EV Banks Arts. Currently I'm a professional adventurer and I didn't always intend that. I did PSC Mathematics at the university. Uh, before then uh, I wanted to be a pilot so I can travel more but I couldn't afford the education because I come from a very humble background. Then I wanted to become an engineer to build good infrastructure, to build even our own home. Couldn't do that either uh, for the same reason but I got to do mathematics, which I love. I still love it very much and I'm still working on it um, as an academic career. Um, but the, the, uh, for the adventure career after my high school and during my university years, I came to realize more and more how blessed I was uh, to have a very athletic physique, uh, which I can use to my advantage uh, to travel the world, to raise funds for all these other things I want to do. And uh, more importantly, I can get to meet people, can get to educate them about the opportunities and resources that they can utilize to uh, make the best out of what we have now. So I was born in Meru at Nkobo Consolata Hospital. In, uh, on a Tuesday, uh, 5th uh, of August 1997, it was during the season of the El Nino. So during my childhood, uh, my mother tells me that she had to dry my, uh, what she called, nappy. I don't know what it's called. I don't know what these people use uh, diapers. Back then there weren't any diapers. You used a cloth to cover your genitals. Um, and she used to clean them. It was raining every day. They couldn't dry. She used to dry them in the oven. <laughs> so I was born in the water season. Maybe that explains why I love water so much now. It's a favorite part of my adventure. And I was raised in Meru as well. Um, in fact, for the most part, I, I was raised at Nkobo. We moved around a little bit. But right now, my parents live in Nkobo, and that is where I spend when I go to Meru, which is very often. Um, my fond memories of my childhood were my school days. Uh, um, I went to schools near Nkobo. Uh, my first school was called uh, Kingsbridge Academy, which has closed down for a few years now because of you know bad management but it was a really good school when I was there uh, set a very solid foundation then after that I went to a boarding school called Kanyakina Boys Boarding School uh, this was during a time when my father was a teacher at Kanyakine High School it was um, not by coincidence it's because Kanyakine Boys Boarding was one of the best schools around that time and yeah, they also did a good job raising me. I'm proud of the man that all these schools have made me. So thank you, Kanyakine. After that, I went to, I went to Nkobo High School uh, for um, high school education. And it was also another very good uh, four years of my life. Uh, shaped me more. And especially because they developed my love for science. Um, I loved my language teachers, specifically English, my favorite language. I loved my mathematics teachers, both in the primary school and in the high school. They inspired me so much that when I went to the university, I continued to study my mathematics. Now I have a Bachelor of Science degree in Applied Mathematics. Um, so uh, I finished high school in 2014 and after one year a gap year I went to Nairobi, the University of Nairobi, Chiromo campus, the College of Physical and Biological Sciences where I pursued the SAGE degree for four years and 
of all those schools I mentioned, the University of Nairobi was the most impactful because besides the formal education, I involved myself in so many co-curricular activities. This is for the first time in my life I encountered adventurers, people who um, do hobbies to um, a, a better, a, in a better way than the people who I grew up with in Meru. Back in Meru, when I went, say, for a hike, people would wonder, why uh, did you not have money to pay for a vehicle? <laughs> you know, in Nairobi, people want to go out there, spend their time, walk around, enjoy the views. I felt that I really belong with these people. And my first group to go um, uh, hiking with was Kenya Red Cross, specifically the University of Nairobi chapter. Back at university, we used to do um, at least one hiking and camping experience per semester. So for me, that meant twice a year for my first year. Um, but by the second year, I had already networked with people from um, the Kenya Red Cross uh, University chapters in the Kenyatta University, Jekwat, and they also used to host such events, so I could go for at least two or three such events every um, semester. Later on, in my university studies, I came across uh, President Award Kenya. It's an organization uh, by the Duke of Edinburgh that uh, promotes um, adventure philosophies to in youths. And I didn't have a lot of chances to participate there because I discovered it quite late in my uh, university life when I had already committed to so many other courses. But I went for another one of my transformational uh, experiences with them. It was a five-day gold expedition, which uh, was the biggest I've ever done up to that point. Um, for the uh, for most of the ones I had done before, I used to be among the best adventurers. And mind you, this is at a time when I didn't have that much um, adventure skill. So meeting these people at PA who could direct me and tell me what to do, how to do it, how I can do it better. They were very keen on assessment. After every five to six hours, you'll uh, present uh what uh, how, how the trip has been um in terms of navigation in terms of the local um, community flora and fauna um uh, you know food we had quartermasters who in charge of food how did that go and um everybody in the team had a role to play and present the this these details for the assessment and that was a truly transformational experience. At the University of Nairobi, there is a strong skating community. So in uh, my second year, I got the opportunity to try out skating. I loved it very much. Um, I, I went ahead and bought a pair of skates for myself. And I could skate for up to four hours a day. On average, I did two hours for about uh, an year and that put me in uh, the intermediate level of skating. Now I can confidently say that I'm an intermediate skater. I love it very much. I'm still doing it uh, even in my current um, position in my adventure career. I am skating and I am teaching skating. That's another transformation experience I had at the university. The biggest um, transform transformation experience for me would be joining the University of Nairobi swimming team. It's called Sharks. And at the, at the University of Nairobi swimming team, we did a lot of training for swimming. How it happened, um, my parents of course promoted the hobbies when I was younger. Um, my father was a member of the Meru Sports Club back when I was living in Meru and he um, took us there and told the pool attendant to help us learn. Of course, he hadn't paid the pool attendant to coach us, 
So for the most bit, I just used to get into the swimming pool and try anything I could. Um, in a few months, there, I could move around comfortably. Then there were other kids whose parents had gone an extra step to uh, get them a coach. And I could come, um, join them, and listen to what the coach is telling them. And then I'll do it. And you know, the coach can't whisper to them because they're in the water. The coach has to shout. I take advantage of that. He's like, do five laps. And he's telling to the stu his students, but I also do five laps. We created very good rapport with the coach. Uh, he, in fact, he took me up. He taught me a few skills. And I became one of the best swimmers at the Meru Sports Club, especially among my peers. So when I went to the University of Nairobi, I thought, hey, I'm a very good swimmer in Meru, so in Nairobi I must also be a good swimmer, right? Wrong. <laughs> Nairobians can swim, especially the university students. So um, the pool in Meru was 33 meters in length. The pool at the University of Nairobi is 50 meters. It's called an Olympic size uh, pool. And I had not tried swimming uh, 50 meters uh, before then. You know, for 33 meters, I can move from one end to the other, rest, then go back, rest. When I tried going 50 meters at the University of Nairobi pool, it was a totally new experience for me. That day, I swam a total of 100 meters. That's my first day. And for the rest of that afternoon, I just seated uh, at the poolside thinking, how could this happen to me? I'm such a good swimmer and I can see other people in the water doing 10, 20 laps non-stop. I can't do one without having to stop and take a break. And I decided I am going to become a good swimmer. So I came back again and again and again with my bad swimming skills. I could, I, I, I did the best I could. Um, short laps, long laps, many laps, few laps, but I always showed up. That was the biggest um, advantage I had uh, at that point. So the pool attendant one day approached me. He said, I have seen you have been very consistent with your swimming practice. Why don't you come tomorrow evening, join the school swimming team, and you'll get more guidance on how to go about your swimming. And that's how I joined the swimming team, by invitation. It was a very good experience. Um, I, I, when I joined, I was among the worst swimmers. With time, I developed my swimming skills. Um, and by the time I was in my fourth year, I was already training some uh, sessions. Uh, in our team. So it was a very good journey. I'm very grateful for my uh, friends in the swimming team uh, who are in the same position that I was at the end when I was starting. They taught me. I haven't caught up with them up to now, you know, because we are all still working on our skills. But if it weren't for them um, teaching me, even when there weren't any uh, swimming uh, classes, we used to have three sessions a week. The rest of the days we'll meet up and practice and when we went back to our swimming sessions uh, I will have a head start ahead of the people who are waiting for the swimming sessions of the school team so that that uh, team was uh, another transformation experience it's friends who we had we created very close bonds and up to now we are still doing adventure besides skating and swimming I also tried my hand in Paco. I tried um, um, some athletics. I'm a, I'm a good runner. I think it comes with the adventure career. Um, yeah. My career as a professional adventurer started in 2020. Um, that is a few months after I finished my university education. Uh, this is a time when I and all my colleagues were looking for jobs. And I stumbled across um, a community of adventurous uh, people called Let's Drift, where I started off as a, um, a hiker. And I was doing it very well. I decided, why not help people 
get into this um, hobby as well. So that's how I became an um, adventure guide. So I already had athletic uh, physique, uh, good swimming skills. I learned very fast about hiking, uh, mountaineering. On uh, 14th um, February 2020, I had my first date with Mount Kenya. <laughs> And um, this is actually my second uh, anniversary uh, since I started mountaineering. So um, there is that. Um, so what I do in adventure now is guiding people. I teach people how to take care of their body, um, their their mind, their gear, to help them go to those places. I uh, offer consultation for itineraries um, for. Uh, mountaineering um, because currently have a focus on mountaineering uh, working at let's drift is my other biggest um, career milestone um, it's a very beautiful community if you haven't checked it out you can check out let's drift.co.ke we have a lot of adventures over there um, we have hiking. Uh, I also teach skating there sometimes. So when I'm not there, we have six other coaches to teach you skating. We have um, um, yoga. We have um, art. We are art enthusiasts. But the core of Let's Drift is the community. Uh, so it's a community of like-minded people, people who love adventure. And if you want to travel, truly, truly travel, you should definitely join the Let's Drift community. So for my inspiration, I want to bring opportunities and resources to help people do adventure because for me in my childhood and as I grew up, I didn't have as much access to opportunities and resources, um, but I was blessed. Uh, things keep aligning, um, everything in its own time, but I feel that if there was someone to direct me, it would have happened much faster. So every day I wake up, I think, how can I extend these blessings in my life to other people? And that is my inspiration. I, there have been a lot of ups and downs. I, um, um, a lot of, I'm still looking for those opportunities and resources as I go along the way feel that if there were more of them, I would have maybe done something different. But uh, having to work with what we, I, I've, I was given, um, I would say I've done the best, I've given the most to um, what I, the, my journey so far, uh, because it started as a hobby, but it's been so good, I decided to pursue it professionally. So, so far very good. My lowest moment, I would say, is related to financial problems. I, especially before, say, I finished my university studies. Um, in my, in my, before I joined the university, we used to have the, such problems, but I was uh, studying in a boarding school, so I, they didn't affect me as much. But after that, I went to the university where I had to fend for myself. Uh, and sometimes I was so broke, we used to buy food at the university mess uh, during times like those. And the food is very cheap, it's about 20 shillings. Once or twice, I found myself in a situation where I didn't have 20 shillings to buy food. I was so introverted, I couldn't bear asking my friends. And the thought of me going to ask my friends to help me buy food for the rest of the week or the rest of the month made me sick. I'll stay in bed and not even attend any classes. I'll just wait, uh, wait it out. But I think things have changed now. Um, again, opportunities have arised so I can keep traveling even when I'm broke. Money to travel is always there. <laughs> so yeah, not anymore. As an adventurer, um, I'm always trying to push the edge, especially um, uh, the things that I fear. I realized that I fear heights the most. So despite the fact that I am a very good swimmer and I love the water, I pursued mountaineering <laughs> to chase those heights. 
and beat my fear of heights. It's been working very well so far, uh, but sometimes I still have a challenge. Uh, as an adventure guide, um, recently at Let's Drift, I took a group of people out um, for a water-based event where we were swimming in open water, in a waterfall. And somebody says, um, challenges me, let's go jump off the waterfall. I'm afraid of heights. I've never jumped off a waterfall before. <laughs> and it's, a, it's my job. I'm supposed to demonstrate to this person that safe diving techniques. I have been trained. I'm a professional swimmer. I should know how to do these things. But since it's a high place, I can't do it. And they went ahead and demonstrated to me instead. <laughs> So that's um, my fear, my biggest fear, and I'm working on it. With regards to fitness, I am a mobility advocate. Mobility, I describe it as a strength in a wide range of motion. So it's a combination of strength and flexibility. Um, so I mostly do this through yoga. I love yoga. It's not only a spiritual practice, but it's also a physical one. I love hiking uh, because you get to keep your body moving. Um, I love running. I love, love swimming very much for that. Uh, you can find resources to follow um, to, to, you, in your mobility journey online. But the most important thing is that we all created very different. Uh, you can try um, uh, some mobility exercises, but also try other forms and find out what works best for you. I have realized that there are so many tools that uh, can be used to optimize uh, these opportunities and resources that we have, especially in the adventure space where um, if more um, of us, and by us I mean Kenyans and Africans, can um, explore and exploit these uh, resources that we have it will be easier for even more and more of us to do it so in the next five to ten years i would like to see more people mountaineering i would like to see more people explore water sports and um, i would like to take up more initiatives and partner with more communities like let's drift who are pursuing the same vision uh, to get more people to the outdoor spaces Uh, in terms of my social life, I'm very happy about my social life right now. Um, I want to keep growing it, growing my social networks to have more friends um, and uh, more special people in my life. Uh, I, in the next five to ten years, I don't plan to have uh, kids or be married. It's still somewhere in the plan, but I am currently 24 years, I think in the next 10 years, by 34 I won't be having a wife for kids. <laughs> My last word goes to um, the people with a passion for adventure in general, uh, but more specifically to the youth, because you have more um, opportunities, you have more time than everyone else. So make sure um, to follow through with your passion. It's not that hard. You can reach out to um, the people who you have seen doing it already. People have tested adventure once, um, want to share it with everyone else. So if you ask around, they'll be sure to tell you. You'll find a lot of solutions that, to the problems that you've been having in your life. They'll be out there when you're hiking, mountaineering, when you're um, sailing in the ocean. That's why you'll find the solutions to a lot of your problems. That's why you'll meet the most interesting people. You'll probably meet your wife out there. <laughs> She's out there right now. <laughs> so go out there and enjoy your life. At the beginning of the, the session, I was a little tense. Uh, we had to retake several times. Um, but I, I have settled in and um, generally I'm very happy about the opportunity to share my journey. I hope this journey gets to inspire more people. Um, furthermore, this is one of those tools that we can use to give um, access to the resources and opportunities uh, that we have been talking about. You can reach out to Let's Drift, my favorite adventure uh, community, uh, through our website, letsdrift.co.ke, Instagram, let's, drift underscore, let's underscore drift, 
um, Twitter, let's underscore drift. Um, any other social media, let's drift. You'll find us there. You can also reach out to me personally through Instagram, kinetic underscore kinoti. Um, and please, please, please remember to like this video, hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. Um, share, share this uh, video, share this channel, and remember to comment as well. Let us know what you think about the whole story and watch the other videos and do the same thing.